one right technique or one best technique. And in many cases, it really is just trying different ones and seeing what works for you. As you say, the one that you're currently doing takes a really long time to get you connected. So maybe there's, maybe there's another practice that you may be able to find that connects you quicker. Um, there's meditations. I mean, different people have different characteristics. And so there's meditations that are very devotionally based rooted in, for example, a mantra about a specific manifestation of the divine. The majority of the mantras that are given are all some variation of, O oh God, by this name or form, I bow to you. And so whether it's to one of the names or forms of Vishnu, whether it's one of the names or forms of Shiva, whether it's one of the names or forms of the mother goddess, the overwhelming majority of mantras that we chant in our meditation are some variety of, oh God, in this name or form or with these characteristics, I bow to you, I surrender to you. And so if the path of devotion is one that feels right to you, that path of love for God, then maybe a mantra would be something that would get you there in the same way that if there's someone you really love, looking at their picture makes you suddenly feel love, right? I mean, if I say to you, okay, on the count of three, generate as much love within you as you can, what most of us will do is immediately call up in our mind's eye a picture of someone we really, really love. That's the fastest and easiest way to generate love within the self is to think about someone you love. Pretend you're with them. Pretend you're looking at them. Suddenly you're full of love. So in the same way, if the devotional path is one that feels right to you, the fastest and easiest way to connect with God is going to be through loving that aspect of God. But for a lot of people, that's not necessarily where they are on a spiritual, religious place. And for a lot of people, it's much more about just awareness, insight, presence, at which point it's just this state of non-attached witnessing. There are techniques of actually naming, ah, Itching, longing, and you sort of just call it by name and then let it go. Then there are practices of not naming or anything, just bringing the awareness back to your breath. Whatever it is that comes up, don't pay attention to it and just stay focused on the breath. There's practices of fo focusing on a candle flame or an image of God or so many different things. See what works for you. My favorite story about this is the story of these three men who were stranded on an island in the middle of the ocean. And naturally they're panicked because they're stranded. And they pray and pray that the universe should send them some means to get off this island. And they wake up one morning and there's a canoe right on the shore. So they're ecstatic and they jump in the canoe and they row the canoe back to the mainland. And a couple of weeks later, they're walking through the market and somebody sees them and the th three guys are walking in a line and they've got this canoe on their heads. They're holding the canoe on the head. And somebody says, why do you have a canoe on your head? And they say, oh, you know, this canoe, it saved our lives. We were stranded on this island in the canoe. It got us back to safety. And the guy says, well, that's great, but why are you carrying a canoe on your head? And they say, oh, you know, this canoe, it, we were stranded and it got us back to safety. And I love that story because it's so obvious that the canoe is just a mechanism, a mechanism to get from where you were stranded across the ocean back to the mainland. 
and it didn't matter that it was a canoe. All that mattered was it could float and they knew how to ride it. Right? It could have been a yacht. It could have been jet skis. It could have been a raft. It could have been anything. All that matters is that they know how to use it and that it works. And that's how meditation is. A lot of us get really stuck with the particular technique. And then it ends up sometimes even handicapping us, like trying to hold a canoe on your head in the middle of the village. Like, let it down because now you're stuck. Now you can't do anything because you've got a canoe on your head. Once, once you've used it and it carries you across, and you find yourself in that state of meditation, that's where you're supposed to be, stay there. And yeah, if you lose it, grab back to the technique. But once you're there, don't worry if the technique has dissipated, it will dissipate. So whatever it is that works, if what you've got now doesn't work, start something new, try a different path. For some people, they find seated meditation really difficult. Do walking meditation. There's a whole bunch of different ways. But what's important is just, just do it. And make sure that it, it does work for you, that it is taking you somewhere, even if you're not getting all the way across the ocean on the first go. At least are you, are you no longer drowning? Are you no longer stranded? 